Hey y'all, I'm excited to be coming back at you with another video all about how I take notes on my iPad. So I'm a professional note taker, that's what I do for a living, and it's called graphic recording. However, this video is really for anyone who's taking notes, so whether you're going to school or whether you're taking notes in a meeting or you're just taking notes for yourself, this video is for you. I'll be sharing my top 10 tools and techniques for using an iPad to take notes. And I just wanna give a huge shout out to Paperlike, which is a screen protector for your iPad that makes it feel like you're writing on paper for sponsoring this video. You can use a link in the description of this video to go grab a copy of Paperlike for yourself. Also, a copy of these notes that I'll be sharing with you in this video will be available as a free download. So uh, go ahead and follow the link in the description of this video to get yourself a copy of these notes for free. Okay, let's dive in, let's do it. Let's go ahead and get started by talking about some tools. The first being the iPad. So I use the iPad Pro and it's the 12.9 inch. This is the third generation. So it came out in 2018. I also use the Apple Pencil. I love the new Apple Pencil. They really improved this and made it so much better than the first generation. So Pencil alone makes it worth uh, getting a newer version. I definitely recommend the bigger screen just for visibility. I primarily take notes in the app Notability. So that's what I've got going on in the background here. And I love this app for two reasons. It's really easy to use and it's got limited features, so it's not overwhelming. There are some apps out there that are really powerful and I use them for other things, but for taking notes, I just want something that's really simple for when I'm capturing information on the go. I have a whole separate video on my channel that goes into the specifics of different features and functions of Notability, so you can go ahead and check that out there. But this is the app that I'm currently in and that I use for my notes. Okay, so let's talk about Paperlike. So I mentioned that it's a screen protector and it makes it feel like you're writing on paper. It's on my iPad right now. You probably can't see it because it's very discreet, but it's got this matte finish. So it really feels and sounds like you're writing on paper. I was skeptical of this when I found out about it. Is it really gonna feel like paper? Yes, it does. So if you're a paper lover and you're trying to go more digital, this is a great tool for you. And also if you use your iPad a lot and you want something that gives you more grip and is easier to write on, this will help resolve that issue. So you'll have more control when you're writing on the iPad. It's really easy to apply. I have a separate video that goes over the application process and it just rocks. I highly recommend you click on that link in the description, get yourself a copy of Paperlike. Okay, the case that I use for my iPad is the Zugu case. I don't have it on right now, but what I love about it is it helps keep my iPad safe and it's got multiple angles for screen tilt. So if you're taking notes, it's hard to take notes when your iPad is just laying flat on the table, so this gives you multiple options for tilting it up or down. Awesome, let's jump into some of the techniques that I use for note taking. And I'm really looking at things that help my notes stay more organized and that help me remember things. And yeah, putting more visuals in always helps, especially with the memory part of it. One of the things that I immediately do when I start a new uh, page for notes is I add guides. So I usually go with dots, but they also have straight lines or gridded lines. So you're gonna find this little gear icon up here and when you click on it, it'll have paper as the first option and when you click on that, you have all these different options. So I can add a grid, I can add line paper, I can change the color of my, my paper here. I really like the dots because they still help me keep that my handwriting nice and level. So that's usually the first thing I'll turn on whenever I start a new page of notes. 
But adding a title to your notes is really important because if you don't, you will have no idea what's on the page and you have to read through it. It's just harder to search for it. So I will add a title as one of the first things that I do after I put my guides in. And I generally write my titles in uppercase because I want them to pop out. I want my title to be the biggest text on the page. And Notability has this highlighter tool that's up here next to the pen tool. Got all these different colors, different sizes. It's what you see in the pink and blue writing. That's the highlighter. And what I like about it is you can go over it multiple times and it'll give you a more opaque mark. So it will double up on the mark, kind of like watercolors. So I really like the effects. You can see here that I went over the original color and it's a little bit darker. So I like that because it gives Gives you the option to add shading and these are two really simple things that I like to do for my titles I'll use that highlighter tool to first write my title and then I'll just go over and outline it with the pen tool so it really pops off the page so this other option is sometimes a little bit faster so if I'm in a rush I'll stick to this one uh, so I'll write the title out with the highlighter tool and then I'll write on top of it with the pen tool and you can check out different examples of how I did titles on these notes so if you want ideas for how you can add fun titles, I've embedded a lot of different styles within these notes so you can check that out when you download your copy. So one of the features in Notability that I love is that you can record the audio. If there is any, there might not be, but if there is audio and you want to make sure that you don't miss anything as you're taking notes, you can go ahead and click on this microphone icon and it will start recording your audio. And what's cool about it is it'll match it to where you were taking notes. One of the things that I see in notes a lot of times is that there's no hierarchy and what that means is the text all looks the same on the page and that makes it really hard to find key pieces of information or to really understand what's going on. It kind of all looks like one block of text. So you really want to think about hierarchy. You want to think about your titles, if there are any subheaders, so these are usually bigger umbrella buckets. I also like to pop out key information, so maybe there's a date or there's a metric of some sort or a quote and I really want to pop it out. Um, so I'll usually do my subheaders and my key pieces of information all in uppercase. And then my main body of text, I usually do that in lowercase. You have legible uppercase, then just make it smaller than your subheaders and your key information. You want to use different colors or shapes and fonts to help you scan through your notes. So you'll notice I have these little speech bubbles, I've highlighted certain words in blue, I've added numbers. It's really important that once you pick a pattern you stay consistent so it's easy for you to find it when you're going back through your notes. Adding images to your text, it really helps with memory. Um, and they did a study on this where they had one group of people look at just text and then they asked them how much they remembered after three days and they remembered about 10%. They took another group and they showed them text and images together and when they asked them what they remembered, the recall rate jumped to 65%. That's amazing. That alone should inspire you to add some images. If you're adding images from the web or from your camera roll, you just click on this little plus sign and then you'll have options on how you can add images into your notes here. Uh, but I definitely encourage you to try drawing. Uh, no one has to look at your notes, but it will help you remember. Okay, last one here. So it's good to think about how you're capturing the information. And usually I stick to either a list or a cluster when I'm taking notes. And lists are really good if you're trying to capture a linear flow of information. So you really want to see what was said first, second, third, versus clusters are really good for capturing different categories. So let's say I'm capturing a conversation where I'm really trying to listen to all the goals, the action steps, and the roles and responsibilities. I would probably use a cluster for that because I'd really want to see those three different categories uh, separated in some ways. So it'd be easy for me to go back and find the information. 
information. You can also try the wandering list and you see that in these notes. It's still a linear flow of information, but it's not the same kind of list that you're probably used to where it's just one bullet point under another. It's got a much more organic shape to it. This is still a list. It's just, it's just wandering <laughs> across the page. Okay, that's it. I hope this was helpful to you in thinking about how to take notes and how to add little things. It really comes down to these small details if you just play around and give yourself permission to add colors, draw, um, do something a little different than what you're used to. You'd be surprised at how much of a difference that makes in just helping you remember and look back on your notes rather than just saying, I'm never gonna look at these again. So make sure to grab a copy of these notes for yourself. These are totally free. I made these for you so that it's easier for you to remember. And also you can see some different techniques that I applied here to different titles. And be sure to check out the link to Paperlike. If you're watching this video within the first two weeks of it being released, then I have a discount code for you that's listed in the description of this video. So make sure to check that out. I'd love to hear some of your tips and techniques and tools that you're using. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this and leaving any comments below. Uh, it's really nice to hear from you all and I'm looking forward to the next video. If there's anything that you're wanting to see or learn, let me know. All right, see you then.